Welcome back. As we mentioned earlier on statistics, South Africa released its quarterly labor force survey for the first quarter of 2019. It shows a grim picture of the country's limping unemployment rate. South Africa's unemployment rate currently sits at 27.6 percent, a 0.5 percentage point increase from the data collected from the fourth quarter of 2018. Lesenga Maluleka is a statistician general. He joins us now from our Pretoria studios. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for taking the time to join us. A good evening to you and again good evening to the viewers. All right, so obviously the conversation has been continuing all day, but what does it mean, the decrease in employment, that it's eventually of traditionally increased behavior during the festive season? Is that the seasonal adjustment? It's not a seasonal adjustment, but the first thing is we are not talking much about the festive uh, environment. We are talking about the first quarter of 2019, where we see that uh, there have been entrants into the labor markets. And as we shall have seen that other than the entrants, we have lost more than a quarter a million jobs, 237,000 jobs uh, in, of those employed were lost. But we also have another 62,000 jobs, in, uh, not jobs, 62,000 more people in the unemployment rate. Okay, so and let's break it down for the layman. So if you say there have been entrants, there's a drop of 237,000 to 16.3. Which of the industries are which worst affected? And if we're saying that there are people who are coming into the market, which ones are those? Let us look at uh, uh, construction. It has seen the biggest loss of, jo of jobs in the first quarter of 2019. That is 142,000 jobs. It was followed by finance. And, and, and back to construction, for example, this is an area where you can get even your unskilled uh, uh, workers coming in. But uh, when you look at finance, that has lost about 94,000 jobs. This is a highly skilled environment, and these jobs were lost largely in the pensions and insurance envi environment, as well as uh, 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 work uh, uh, that is not elsewhere classified in the business industry, like consultancy and the like. Uh, now, uh, uh, having said that, we have also seen uh, benefits coming from transport, manufacturing and utilities but they were not enough to offset the losses that occurred in uh, in, in 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 finance and construction mm. so if we're looking at that first quarter and those additional jobs or additional employment is it including the retail sector and tourism sector from the festive season and that's why i asked you earlier on about the seasonal adjustment uh, certainly, if you look at uh, trade and you look at uh, 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 tourism, tourism is very difficult to uh, take out alone because uh, you can pick up tourism on the side of construction when new hotels are being built and new facilities for hosting tourists are being built. You also see tourism on the side of retail where when tourists are here, you can uh, 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 they spend but if you look at trade it has actually created uh, employment there were no losses but as regards the new entrance in the in, in the in the job market the first quarter usually receives a lot of uh, young people coming out of high schools as well as uh, coming out of universities who then uh, come with uh, inexperience in the job market and are starting to look for employment. Mm. And comparing with the figure from the first quarter to the fourth quarter of 2018, just how much did we lose jobs in terms of percentage point? We have uh, lost about 0 0.9 of a percentage point, almost a percentage point. In the first quarter of 2018, we were sitting at 26.7% unemployment rate. Currently, we are sitting at 27.6% uh, unemployment rate. This is the official unemployment rate. 
Now, when you look also at the discouraged work seeker, which has increased by 156,000 persons quarter on quarter to 3 million persons, uh, if you add those to the 6.2 million persons that are officially unemployed, as well as about 0 0.9 of a million, that's about uh, 900,000 persons who did, uh, didn't look for employment but would have taken up employment had it been available, we come to a, a, a number of the unemployed people sitting at 9.9 .9 million persons. Mm. Uh, which is accounted for by 38%. That is the expanded unemployment rate. So you spoke about the young people. What is the working age population? Has that grown in general? Firstly, we know, firstly, we know that uh, the Basic Conditions of Unemployment Act, uh, Section 431A, says that uh, you can hire anybody over the age of 15 years. So uh, uh, from 15 years to 64 years is the working age. Those young people aged 15 to 24 years are the most vulnerable in the labor markets. Their unemployment rate st starts at 31% uh, for graduates, and for those with less than metric, it's sitting at 58.4%. And that cohort, their unemployment rate on average is 55.2%, which is the highest amongst all age cohorts. And we are uh, including male, female, black and white. Now, when you go to uh, uh, your black African female, they are also quite vulnerable to labor markets because they are sitting in the excess of 30%, about 32.8% of unemployment uh, nationally. What is Yet, it? going back to young people, mm -hmm. we have those aged 15 to 24 years again. All those working and not working are about 10.3 uh, million persons in South Africa. 3.4 million of those are not in employment, education, and training. And they account for about 34.2% of that age cord of 15 to 24 years. Uh, so I was going to ask then, what is the picture, especially in the informal sector, given the fact that especially when we talked about discouraged job seekers, and you mentioned the fact that a lot of those are young people coming out of the... Uh, secondary school or higher education school system. So what's the picture in the informal, set, in, in the informal sector? We, we have seen job losses in the informal sector. We have seen also job losses in agriculture. But also in our labor force, for those that are employed, about 30 percent uh, are in uh, informal as well as it's more like elementary and domestic work category so i want to look at some of the structural challenges that we have going forward and uh, we were speaking earlier on to economists who were just giving their uh, thoughts around the challenges and obviously the the electricity factor has been a major one just looking at job losses in the past couple of months as well how are we likely to improve in the next quarter if that is still a major factor strangely utilities which uh, include electricity and water supply have uh, created about 16,000 jobs largely in the uh, collection and, uh, and, and, uh, of electricity as well as distribution, as well as in the purification of water. And uh, when you look at uh, manufacturing that uh, uh, depends on electricity, has also uh, seen increases in the, in the jobs in the quarter under review, about 14,000 jobs. And these jobs were largely in recycling, not elsewhere classified, as well as non-metallic manufacturing and food uh, 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 manufacturing. 
so certainly, uh, and, and as you would have uh, seen, while we had challenges of electricity in the first quarter of 2019, uh, food remained available in the shelves throughout the country. Mm. Uh, so you're saying some of those uh, structural deficiencies aren't really hindering in terms of uh, basic drivers of development? I wouldn't uh, 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 dispute the fact that it does affect uh, el electricity and power shortages do affect uh, 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 economic growth and, and, and of course any other sector uh, that depends on electricity utilities uh, including water would be uh, affected. Uh, but uh, economies are very uh, uh, strange at times because they, they do behave in a particular way uh, from time to time. Uh, that, that's the first one. But having spoken of structural issues, not from the side of utilities alone, we can see challenges of structural unemployment in South Africa. Because when unemployment affects people of a particular race, far more than others, then it's structural. The unemployment of uh, Africans in general, but black African women in particular sitting at 32.8% compared to that one of white women sitting at 6.8% tells you that structural is something is not proper. And uh, when you look at your rural provinces in the form of the Eastern Cape, uh, um, Mpumalanga Northwest, Limpopo, uh, they have your highest expanded unemployment rate than your, uh, uh, your, your urban uh, provinces. Limpopo, for example, has always retained the, the lowest unemployment rate in terms of official definition, 18.5 as of now. But when you look at uh, the expanded definition, it goes further to about 43%, uh, percent, slightly more than that. And that tells you that you have a lot of discouraged work seekers in Limpopo, which is a structural issue coming out of the apartheid spatial uh, establishment. All right, thank you very much, Statistician General. And speaking about uh, question of the day, really, uh, the high unemployment rate that we're seeing, and we're asking you, how has it impacted on your daily life and those of those around you? And it's something that seems to have affected literally everyone. We've had plenty of tweets and plenty of WhatsApp comments about it. Let's listen to what you've been saying on this issue tonight. I think personally un unemployment has affected my family, uh, in particular my sister who has two degrees and uh, is still at home. Um, and then in general the society, you know, people are unemployed and then this leads to, to them uh, actually stealing other people's things, trying to get their life back on the line. So if they give us more jobs, if the government can provide more jobs, then it's it's less crime. This unemployment is affecting us, especially people from rural areas. Because when we apply for learnerships or for apprentices, they usually take people who are surrounded those mines, forgetting us from rural areas. As I am speaking, I, I got N5 mechanical. But I can't get any apprentice or any leadership. It is going to affect us in many ways because now crime rate is about to go up, armed robbery is about to go up, and as long as South Africans are unemployed, they will find other means to make a living and there is no other way besides becoming a criminal. So crime rate is about to go up and a lot of people are going to suffer in South Africa in the future. And we really do want to give our heartfelt thanks to all of you for sharing your experiences and your thoughts on this. Um, I know it's not easy, tough times, uh, probably still.